Well, the world has officially gone crazy. Absolutely mad. When you're on a boat, you feel somewhat disconnected from the broader comings and goings of the world. Most of the time, this is exactly how we like it. This, however, was not something we could escape from. A lot of things around the world are changing fast. Severe border restrictions. With the number of global infections exceeding half a million. It all started with a weather window in the north of the Solomon Islands. We prepared Sylvia, raised the anchor, and set sail for Papua New Guinea. Full of wonder and as wild as it gets, it's somewhere I've dreamt of visiting my whole life. But as you can imagine, things didn't go entirely to plan. Our a bit of a pickle. With very little warning, we had to make some difficult choices, and with much uncertainty and doubt, we fled for the borders of Australia. Amongst the uncertainty, a beautiful adventure unfolded. This is our week of chaos, fear, doubt, surprise encounters, and a whole lot of luck. This is the story of a sailboat named Sylvia and the ragtag crew that call her home. Join us each week as we explore our planet both above and below the surface and find out what it's really like to live a life at sea. This is Expedition Drenched. Our first sunrise in Papua New Guinea. It's been uh, quite intense because there were squalls coming, the wind was changing all the time, but we managed to sail almost for the whole uh, a trip and we are just motoring in the last passage to, the, to our destination, to our anchorage. Woke up with the world in your eyes, sure as the light of the moon. Look up. Cloud in the sky, but how they appear without warning. When you came along and I sang you a song, could it be wrong? And yeah, let's go to a steer, otherwise, I don't know where we are going. Going in the green. Wish us luck. A school of fish swimming 20 meters below us. You can see every single detail. <laughs> oh, I didn't even see you back there. I was like, where's that coming from? Where's the visitors? What is your name? Jimmy. You are Jimmy. Yeah. I, re I heard about you. <laughs> I heard to ask for Commodore Jimmy. <laughs> <That's good. laughs> Hello. Hello. What do you think of our first visit? This is Jimmy, who I read about. Commodore Jimmy, if you will. They seem very friendly and excited to see some people. I doubt they get very many visitors around here, so yeah. That's the beauty of, of Navionics and, and frankly, like um, different uh, people being able to add information in. Is you can say, hey, I anchored here, this guy's really nice, ask him about this. We've been adding a bunch of our locations in and, and good dive spots. And I just think that that's the best way to do it. Somebody wrote that Commodore Jimmy here is a good dude, so we've come to see him. Quarantine flag. You're not supposed to be here. <laughs> so put these up. If you don't know when you come into a country, you have to put the quarantine flag up. We have like a Papua New Guinea junk coming in. Is that what they call them? Or is that only Indonesia? I don't know. 
but uh, it's got a black sail. It's like a big outrigger canoe. And I think they're coming to share their anchorage with us, which I'm pretty surprised because we haven't seen a soul out here. So to see <laughs> another boat pulling in is going to be interesting. It's got black sails. That's pretty interesting. Kind of jealous. Beautiful morning. What I got? Uh huh. You know what that is? That's beetle nut. I got this in the Solomons before we left, and we just never had the opportunity to eat all the beetle nut we wanted to. But I got it on our way out because this stuff is like solid gold out here. Good for trading, but we don't know how to do it. So Commodore Jimmy, we hope will uh, do some beetle nut with us. It's got deep roots here in uh, Papua New Guinea and in Solomon. They've been doing it for hundreds of years, but we'll cross those bridges when we get there. For now, we gotta get to land. bit of a pickle. We are stuck in between worlds. We are now trying to check into Papua New Guinea and uh, because of the current situation of coronavirus they've kind of like locked it down so there's only a couple ports that you can. This is normally one of those ports. They're not allowing it at the moment. Um, we're far from the other port, not even close to where we were going. So um, they're just seeing what they can do for us and hopefully we're able to get checked in. Not, they might send us on our way. I'm the coconut. Yeah, so you're a professional. It hits me hard and it cuts me deep. I'm a thousand miles from happiness. That just showed us that you cut it open. Yeah, open. Okay. After cutting, you eat it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. You chew it or you eat it? Chew it. Just chew it, okay. Do you swallow it? No, no spit, swallow. It out, yeah. spit it out. Yeah. Okay. okay. And then, what do you, you, what do do you do with these? What do you do with the, the lime and the. You dab between nuts and after that, you go down. Fruit mustard here. Mm -hmm. Okay. You, okay, you get it wet. Mm -hmm. you put, it, put it in the lime. You can turn the lime in there. And then you just eat the lime. Mm. And what makes it red? Nothing looks red. Mm. It's going to red. Now. It's going to turn red now. Two types of chewing. When you are young, mm -hmm. your teeth still there, you can chew. Mm -hmm. The other one, where you are. Your teeth is yeah. Because you have no teeth, so you used to eat. Ah. Mm. And this one is the best, and then chew it. Mm. Okay. So you like chew it up in that, and then you just put it in your mouth. This one lehi, Missy Mo call it lehi. Okay. This one muka. Okay. Kauri. Kauri. How are you doing? So still, still, still working it up. Yeah. Is it red? I think you need more. Let's get in there. Yeah. yeah. How old are most people when they start beetle nut? Like, how old were you the first time you tried it? Uh, sometimes. Yeah. This small? Yeah, you see, like you? Yeah, oh. Huh? oh. Okay. Yeah. So kids do. Yeah. Kids, kids do it. Too. In one day, how many times do you try? Do you do beetle nut? No, not no, one. Like one yeah. time, maybe. Anytime. Anytime. Yeah. Okay. It's a good time. For yeah. Oh, Nate's a pro now. Nate's like the advisor. Mm. Mm -hmm. Mm. I 
spicy. I feel it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Drink more lime. Heard it said when the road is long, all the miles make the All right, we'll see you out there on the open ocean. Bye. Right, have fun, ladies. What do we get to do? We are the chosen ones to go on a on a ride with yeah. a traditional canoe. I'm excited because I looked so beautiful sailing yeah. away through on top of the reef because they don't have the draft is very draft. Tough. Yeah, the draft is very very low. Like you can see, that it's just yeah. above the waterline. And what was your name again? Joshua. Joshua. Okay. Joshua. <laughs> What do you call the name of the, the boat? How do you call the boats? Sailau. Sailau. And does your boat have a name? Iwaisia. Mm -hmm. Sailing outrigger canoes known as Sailau in Papua New Guinea are still vital for trade fishing and transportation. The canoes are built locally out of masswood trees. Masswood, as the name suggests, is often used in the construction of boat spars and hulls. Unlike most sailing vessels, Selau do not tack. Instead, they swap ends, the bow becoming the stern, keeping the outrigger permanently to windward. They are built by master carvers. The sails are made out of whatever is available, patches of plastic sheeting or old tarps, for example. They are seaworthy and capable of going long distances. The Selau have what is known as a balanced lug, which are extremely efficient and have the advantage that they require little standing rigging to support them. In enough wind, Selaus can sail speeds up to 18 knots. Bye bye, we're staying here. See you later. It's crazy though, right? like, you can see the coral reefs just ahead of us, like underneath us, everything. It's, uh, it's magical. We're just going on top of the reef. It feels very strange to be full sail over the top of like a reef that's maybe a meter below us. Yeah. Not how we do things on Sylvia? No. It must be uh, very, feel very good to just be able to go wherever you want. You don't have to worry about anything yet. Well, I mean, I mean some yeah. things, but you don't have to worry about where the reef is unless it's like sticking up out of the water, you know? I bet their draft is like six inches. <laughs> That's awesome! That's fast! You guys are so fast! This thing is so fast! <laughs> now you want one of these, eh? We, we change? Yeah. <laughs> How do you say thank you in your language? I don't want to give in to the hysteria that is the world right now, but it is the way things are, and you'll find that our videos are quite a ways behind, or at least I'm hoping that by the time you see this, that this is all over. So, right now, we really feel like we're stuck in between two worlds. If you've ever seen Waterworld, we feel a little bit like that. Like we're just out here quarantined on our own little floating city, being self-sufficient, but uh, it's really hard for us to to get an idea of how the rest of the world is handling this coronavirus outbreak at the moment. They're not allowing us to check in at the moment. They've asked us just to stay quarantined on the boat until they figure out what they want to do with us. Very friendly. Um, and of course, we've been in Solomons for the last couple of months. We feel quite comfortable that uh, we don't have it. After talking with a lot of people on the sat phone as to what to do, 
I'm not too stoked about it, but we're going to go charging into Australia because I want to get there before they close the borders. So we're going to go, we're going to self-isolate there, we're going to get some work done. We're probably going to pick some islands on the Great Barrier Reef and just kind of hide out. We don't really know. So I just downloaded the weather on our sat phone um, using an app that we use a lot called PredictWind. They have a feature that's called departure planning and it helps you see what are the differences if I leave, for example, this morning versus six hours from now and then six hours from now and six hours from now and it makes it quite easy to see which is pretty cool. I'm gonna hit play and it's basically gonna show this is if we left this morning right here this first kind of boat um, and then it's showing the different routing depending on which um, weather model you're using. We've got pretty sweet wind it's gonna be on our beam pretty strong wind it's gonna be fast sail it's gonna be a rough sail if we look it shows on the tables here and you can compare each departure so for example um, these days are going to be faster. Um, it's going to take us three days instead of three and a half, four days. And then it shows you the percent time that we'll be reaching, which the first two days will be 100%. Um, if we left the second two days, we'll have some downwind as well. And even our swell um, sizes. So like the earlier we leave, the bigger swells we're going to have. So we kind of have to choose between speed and comfort. There we go, easy bang, enough. Bang, boom. Yeah, we do have a long wash. Yeah. Aww. Getting ready to go through this pass. Now I can see breaking waves out on the horizon. We are coming to the outer reef of Papua New Guinea. And uh, from there, it's just open seas. I think it's gonna be, I think it's gonna be a good crossing. It is seven o'clock at night and the sun is just starting to go down and we're making our way through a shipping lane and we've got big, huge cargo ships, about four within a few miles of us. So we've got our eyes out on the horizon. Um, we've got our AS on and our radar on so we can see when they're coming. And the ocean is feeling pretty majestic at the moment, I have to say. We're riding alongside, you know, probably three meter swells and the camera just doesn't show it, but some of these waves are just beasts. Here we go, three more days to go, hopefully. <laughs> Fingers crossed. It's three o'clock in the morning. We've been dodging chips all night. And there's one that's just off our port side at about 10 o'clock. And it's less than a mile away. But we called him up on the radio. Everything's all good. But it's still always a bit unnerving to see lights that close to you at night when you're under sail and, and they're under motor and they're much bigger than you are. Other than that, the wind has dropped down a bit. The swells dropped down a bit. It's quite a, quite a cruisy ride up here. Well, this is it. This is the end to our first season. And this is our final sail. And I couldn't be more happy with the way that this first season went. Uh, the amount that I've learned about myself, about the boat, um, I'm really, I'm really happy. I'm really like surprised with myself, to be honest with you. Uh, this was a, a big undertaking to, this is a custom boat full with a, uh, little quirks and things and we've come a long way almost 7,000 miles in fact 
um, this first season. And in the last nine months, just the amount of connections we've had with with other cultures and people and friends we've made and all of our crew that's kind of like come and gone over the season have each one of them I've learned something from and they've left some sort of impact on the project and on Sylvia, certainly myself. And as we head to Australia, back to really the first uh, real civilization, if you will, uh, since leaving New Zealand. Um, I'm excited. It, I, it, it's going to feel very different. It's going to feel very fast paced compared to what we've experienced over the last nine months, especially the last couple of months in Solomon's. Anyway, this project is really uh, starting to shape up to, to be what I had envisioned, slowly but surely. Uh, we definitely we moved way too fast at the beginning of the season, and I know that now. And people told us that. Uh, when we started, they're like, you're gonna go to all of those places in one season? And we're like, yeah, why not? And now I get it, you know? Uh, when we finally slowed down in Solomon's for four months, it just, everything changed. It's never gonna be the same after this, you know? I don't think that uh, it's gonna have that same uh, feeling of like, are we gonna make it or <laughs> do we know what we're doing? I feel quite comfortable now. You know, even on this sail, you know, we things break, we fix them. That's boat life. It's not to say that it's been easy. There's been hard times. Uh, there's been rough times. Just wanted to to say thank you to all the crew uh, from this first season. They saw us in when we had no idea what we were doing. We learned this thing together. Uh, I want to say a special thank you to Sylvan. Uh, who, hey, I couldn't ask for a better uh, situation of buying a boat than this. Like, hey, he's now just such a good friend, and for him to have not just stayed on and teach us the boat like he did, but to, to come back in a friend role and probably coming back again soon. Starting this adventure in New Zealand was the best thing that we could have done. Just the warm, welcoming people of New Zealand um, who were just so helpful and friendly and um, really just um, put the wind in our sails before we even sailed away, honestly. And um, of course, a big, big thank you to, uh, to Jordan, who is definitely um, ah, she's the brains behind the operation. She's she's the artiste. She's uh, definitely a good partner in crime for this project, and and uh, I'm really glad I have her. She's somebody that we can um, that under yeah, just somebody that can uh, roll with the punches with me for sure. It's not a, um, it's not an adventure. <laughs> this is not a, there's no scuba diving involved. It's just me getting a little personal with you. Because I want to be, want to be genuine with our audience. And I, um, I feel like I've uh, been struggling with something as of late, uh, Jordan and I, as to how to articulate and to explain, um, I guess, uh, where we are at. Um, and our relationship and uh, we've had many ups and downs as of late and um, for a while now actually some time ago um, Jordan and I decided that we would um, as far as relationship go our separate ways um, which means that if you don't know uh, Jordan and I have been dating for about five years now and um, we are no longer a couple. And it's been long enough that I can say that with, um, you know, not getting emotionally upset or, or anything like that, uh, because it's actually happened some time ago. Um, so, 
Uh, it's just been one of those things, like um, as a channel or an adventure channel or sailing channel. We don't, you know, talk about like the inner workings of a relationship. And maybe some of our new viewers maybe didn't even know that uh, that we were an item unless you've been following us for years and years. So, um, what does that mean? Um, well, I'll start with saying that uh, she's not going anywhere. Uh, we are going to try to continue to to do this um, this art project <laughs> as uh, as friends. Which, right there, I'm sure that many of you might be chuckling that that would be impossible to keep that that might be. Um, but I think yeah, we're going to give it a go, and um, it. It may not all work out, that is life, but we're, uh, we're trying our best. Um, we're still very good friends. Um, we still uh, love each other in many ways, but it's, um, it's gonna go our, our separate ways as a couple. And uh, maybe you've gone through something like this yourself, where um, you know it's just really hard to let go of, of all you know, but at the same time, you know me, what's right so yeah it's just really hard to to be that personal it's one of the the hardest things about um us having our lives on the internet <laughs> is uh you know when when a relationship or when something really hard you know having to divulge that to the world if you will <laughs> so put yourself in those shoes and it's just really an awkward situation to be in uh, to say the least um but you know it's boat life um it's just so hard like honestly i can't uh all these uh, older couples that we meet there's just the two of them on a boat congratulations i don't know how you do this without killing each other uh with that said um just know that we're still very good friends and that we still very much care about each other and to just be um yeah, for a long time we didn't know how we we're gonna do this, but on the sale I've decided, you know, there is no good way. There is no right time. It's now been months. Just, just be honest. And um, at some point, I don't know if she'll want to talk about it as well. But it's um, it's been a mutual thing. Um, and she said, you know, just tell her how it is. You know. Uh, give us love in the comments if you could. And maybe tell us a story about when you went through something similar. We can take criticism as well for us trying to continue to, to live on a boat together. Um, so we'll we'll see where this all goes. Um, my my magic crystal ball doesn't show all, but um, I know I know this that that um, everything's gonna be okay. We both certainly want. Um, our Drench project to continue. We put a lot, a lot of love and, into this thing. Years of, of dedication and hard work goes in, into making uh, these weekly episodes. Thanks for your support, guys. And um, back to your normally scheduled programming of adventure and sailing, I suppose. such a long time of being away. Uh, it's not our longest crossing ever, but yeah, it's still, it's just such a crazy feeling to just be out in the middle of nowhere for so long. And all of a sudden you're here and you made it and it feels very cool. So Sylvia, we do copy. Coming up Sylvia, this is KVTS on Tell 12. Good afternoon sir, I can see you on ARES, you're in now. I was told, yes, I have spoken with the regional harbour master. Um, and he has asked us to uh, designate an anchorage for your vessel. Um, it will be outside of Cairns Harbour itself. Next time on Expedition Drenched, we arrive in Cairns, Australia, where we await for our quarantine instructions. 
pirates are coming to steal this booty. I have to pull my finger and pull my soul. Chicken poo. Chicken poo. I was like, what kind of poo? Chicken poo. I don't think I'm going to be in again. <laughs> Until I'm someplace in Rome and I'm peeling that guy has it and says, well, I'll do it. Three days? Yeah, yeah, just about three days on the dot. No, 48 hours. No. No? No. I don't know. I, I, I three honestly days. follow up. Three, three days. days. Three? Yeah. I think it was 48 hours, two no, days. No, no, no. I don't know. I, I, I'm, I'm really okay. super, like, super tired. <laughs> I didn't yeah. sleep at all. What day is today? Oh my goodness. <laughs> no, I don't no. like it. I don't like it. Uh. <laughs>